I'm here at one of our wild boar enclosures. So in this enclosure, we've got mom and dad. Mom's name is Ash and dad's name is Sid. And uh, you can really tell them apart for a few reasons. First of all, male wild boar do tend to be bigger and hairier. In our case, Sid is also the greedy one. I've got some apples cut up here in this bucket, so I'm going to toss them some apples since, of course, that's what they're after. Um, here we go. Yep, there you go, Sid. <laughs> <laughs> Landed it on his head. The other way you can tell males and females apart is that they've got uh, tusks. So both sexes have tusks, and tusks are just specially adapted canine teeth, but the males have really quite large and prominent tusks, so they'll be sticking out of their mouth. A lot like you'd imagine on a warthog, and oftentimes people do confuse these guys for warthogs, but wild boar are the British species, so that's what we've got here at Wildwood. I might as well toss them another bit of apple. There you go. And Sid is normally a greedy guts. He'll be the one stealing from everyone, so I try to keep them both satisfied. So wild boar are the wild relatives of pigs. And indeed, you can certainly see and hear and smell the resemblance. Um, and actually, pigs are descended from wild boar. Historically, wild boar used to roam across Britain, and they were a favorite of hunting parties, not only for their meat, but also for their thick leather and their bristles. So you'll notice our guys are wearing their winter coats right now, and if you had a chance to touch it, it would feel a bit like touching a broom. Their bristles are quite coarse, quite stiff, and before we had modern materials, that's what was used to make paintbrushes and hairbrushes and even toothbrushes. So tonight when you clean your teeth, be grateful that you're not doing it with their bristles. I'd better throw them another apple. Here we go. Sit. There you go, buddy. So wild boar were hunted to extinction, actually, in Britain, but because hunters liked to hunt them so much, what they did is they went over to mainland Europe, brought them back, uh, let them sort of multiply again, and then hunted them again, and so on and so on and so on. And people still like to eat wild boar today, but nowadays we don't hunt wild boar so much as we farm it. So wild boar are farmed the same way you'd farm pigs. Now pigs and wild boar are really clever animals and are quite large, quite hefty. So you need not just a regular fence to keep them in, but an electric fence. And behind me, we've got two fences. This one isn't electric, I'm fine. The one on the inside is. And that's because these guys are so big, um, the male probably weighs about as much as a full grown man. And they're so fast, they can run up to 35 miles an hour as their top speed, that they could actually knock down a regular fence if they tried. So we need the electric fence to give them a little bit of a reminder that this is their enclosure, which is all fine and good until, of course, there's no more electric fence. So when there's a storm or a power cut, the electric fence doesn't work anymore. Uh, wild boar are clever enough to test it. And this is actually what's happened uh, all over the country over the course of the last 20 years or so. Wild boar have escaped from farms and because they're perfectly adapted to living in Britain, they've started to repopulate the woodlands around the country today. And DEFRA estimate there are about 7,000 wild boar around the country, but we can't be quite certain because they're a nocturnal species. So yes, it is daytime and they're wide awake here. They're quite adaptable actually. They're used to waking up in the daytime if there's no threat of predators, but in the wild or when they're living near people, they've figured out that nighttime is probably a bit safer for them. So they'll be waking up at nighttime instead. If you take a look at a wild boar's features, you can probably guess what its best senses are. So you'll notice they have a really long snout. They have an excellent sense of smell. And I'm going to feed them a little bit more. There you go. They have an excellent sense of smell. And they can actually smell their food underground. Now I haven't mentioned what they like to eat. They're omnivores. So just like humans, they can eat a combination of meat and veg. In the wild, their healthy diet would be mostly veg. So they'd be eating all kinds of plants, but they wouldn't just be eating the leaves and the shoots, they'd be eating the roots as well. So they'd be using that great big nose to dig up roots and tubers and gobble them up. But they can also eat earthworms, slugs, and they're not too fussy about other meat. So if they happen to come across somebody else's leftovers, they'll scavenge it as well. Now across Europe, 
there is an issue of wild boar coming into urban environments where they actually eat people's rubbish. As you can imagine, this isn't really healthy for them, but they are able to eat a lot of human food as well. So in the wild, their diet would be 95% veg, a little bit of leftover meat. And at Wildwood, we like to replicate that, which is why I've got a snack of apples for them today. And they absolutely love apples. It's like candy for them. So that's why they're very excited that I'm here. Now, we were talking about their senses. You notice that their snout is quite long, but also their ears are quite large, which should give you the clue that they have a really good sense of hearing. So when they're awake at nighttime, they're not relying so much on their eyesight as they are on their sense of smell and hearing to tell if a predator is coming. Although they're quite large and quite tough looking, in the wild, they would be watching out for any potential danger, such as wolves or lynx to come by, and they'd especially be protecting their young. Now, wild boar babies are born in the spring. This year, our boarlets were born almost a month ago, which makes them uh, pretty early babies. Other years, they'd usually be born around late March or early April. And they will mature when they're about four months old. They won't be fully grown yet, but they'll be old enough to have weaned and left mom and dad. So when these guys are four months old, we'll move them off to their own enclosure, uh, basically because they'll be at the stage much like a lot of teenagers where they're quite done with mom and dad and happy to be on their own. When they're six months old, they're at the age where they could possibly start to mate and they'll only reach their final size when they're about a year and a half or two years old. You'll notice something about our borlets that our adults don't have. They're quite stripy and that's why we sometimes call them humbugs. Not only is it really charming, but also it helps with camouflage. Because they're so small, um, they're quite vulnerable to be prey for a lot of other animals, not just the large predators as well. So stripes help them to blend in with their environment when they're busy sleeping in a little pile and mom and dad might be nearby. And you'll have to take my word for it, but even though I know what I'm looking for, if they weren't out and about and running around, I wouldn't be able to tell that they were there as well. And they actually start exhibiting adult behaviors when they're only one week old. So they, they're acting like grown-ups. They're running around, they're rooting in the ground, that's their nose digging into the ground, but they're not yet weaned from mum. So like other mammals, they'll be drinking milk until they're at least a few months old in their case. And when they're around four months old is when they start to get their adult coats in and that's when they'll lose their stripes. Wild boar in captivity can live up until about 20 years of age. So if I'm not mistaken, Sid is about 13 years old and Ash, the mum, is a little bit younger. She's about four years old. Um, so she's got quite a few years ahead of her. They both have uh, to potentially keep on having wild boarlets. Now, wild boar are still around in Britain today, and you'd be quite lucky to see one. For that, you need to go for a walk in the woods. The highest concentration, if I'm not mistaken, is in Dean Woods, although the new woods also have quite a few wild boar. But I wouldn't actually advise to go near them, especially if you have a dog with you. And the simple reason being, especially at this time of year, they're going to be very protective of their young. And just like any mom or dad out there concerned for their children, wild boar will do anything to keep their boarlets safe. Now I mentioned earlier that they weigh about as much as a full grown man and they can run a lot faster than any man. So do you really want 100 kilos running at you at 35 miles an hour? I know I certainly don't. And furthermore, the males have these really impressive tusks that are quite sharp and they are absolutely evolved to protect themselves and their families. So although it would be really cool to see them in the wild, we recommend that you don't go out looking for wild boar, but rather, once we're open again, you come back to Wildwood to see them. These ones are certainly accustomed to humans, they're not shy, but the ones in the wild, just like any wild animal, might get aggressive if they feel threatened, especially if you've got a dog. All right, cool.